Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. A few years ago, I made a video on a viral math problem that some of you might remember. You have a square and a point in the interior of the square. Connect the point to the midpoints of the sides, dividing the square into four regions. Three of the areas are given by 16, 20, and 32 square centimeters, and you are to solve for the area of the fourth region. Now, I was reviewing this video, and I came across a comment that touched my heart. This was from Karem Kaya 6915 Hey, a very similar question was asked in Turkey's university entrance exam yesterday. I don't know if I could solve it if I didn't watch this video. I haven't got the results yet, but you made me make one question more and closer to the university I want. Thanks a lot. This comment really touched me and it led to some investigative research. What was the question at hand? So I reviewed all of these old university entrance exams and with the help of Google Translate, I was able to deduce that this was probably the question from the 2019 AYT. A point inside a pentagon is connected to the midpoints of the sides of the pentagon and to a corner, as shown in the figure. The areas of the six regions are written in the figure. The two regions connected to a corner are A and B, and the remaining four regions are 4, 8, 7, and 5. Imagine all areas are in square units. The question is to determine the value of A minus B. So how can we figure it out? Before I solve this problem, I want to take a step back and review a fundamental concept. Let's start out with a right triangle. Suppose we know the value of its base and its height. The area of the triangle is equal to 1 half the base times the height. But this formula applies not only to right triangles, it applies to any triangle. So let's say we draw a parallel to the base, so the distance between this line and the base is equal to the height. Suppose we change the upper point of this triangle. Notice we have a new triangle. It still has the same length on its base, and its height will still be the same value as the right triangle. So this triangle will have the same area as the original triangle. In fact, all of the triangles where we move this top point along this line will have exactly the same area as the original triangle and all of the other triangles. This formula not only applies to these triangles, but also if we have a triangle which has an obtuse angle and the height is outside of the triangle. So how can this concept help us solve the problem? Let's first solve the viral problem. We have a square and a point on the interior of the square. The point is connected to the midpoints of the sides, dividing the square into four regions. The areas of three of the regions are given as 16, 20, and 32 square units, and we need to solve for the area of the fourth region. So how can we solve it? To get started, let's create some triangles. Connect the interior point to the corners of the square. So we're going to connect four line segments, dividing the square into eight different triangles. Let's color code these regions. Let's say the region with an area of 16 is color coded as yellow, the region with an area of 20 is green, and the region with an area of 32 is brown. So now let's take a look at these triangles. Let's focus on the two triangles that are along the base of this square on the bottom side. What can we say about the areas of these two triangles? Well, these are divided at the midpoint of the side. So we can say that these two bases have an equal length. Now, what's the height of each triangle? Each triangle has exactly the same height as the other triangle. Therefore, we have equal base lengths and the same height for both triangles, so these two triangles have equal areas. Let's denote these areas by the letter A. So both of these regions have an area equal to A. 
Let's do the same thing for all of the sides of the square. So let's take a look at the left side of the square. We have two triangles here. Once again, we're divided at the midpoint, so these two lengths will be equal to each other. Then the height of these triangles will be equal. So once again, we have equal base lengths, the same height lengths, and so these triangles have equal areas. Let's denote these areas by the letter B. Let's continue to the upper side of the square. Once again, we have two triangles. They have equal base lengths. They have equal height lengths. So these two triangles have equal areas. Let's denote these areas by the letter C. Finally, we proceed to the right side of the square. And once again, these two triangles have equal areas. And let's denote these areas by the letter D. So now let's take a look at the big picture. We don't know the value of A, B, C, or D, but we do know the areas of the color-coded regions. So let's start out with the gold region. We have A plus B is the area of the gold region, and we know that's equal to 16. Then the green region will be equal to B plus C, and that is equal to 20. The brown region will have an area equal to C plus D, and that is equal to 32. Finally, the blue region has an area that's equal to A plus D, and that's exactly what we need to solve for, which is the area of the blue region. From here, let's add some of these equations together. Let's add the top two equations. We will get A plus B plus C plus D. Now, let's add the bottom two equations we will get b plus c plus a plus d. Now let's compare these two equations. Each expression has four different variables. Each one also has one a, one b, one c, and one d. So a plus b plus c plus d is equal to b plus c plus a plus d because each has exactly one of each variable. So these two expressions are equal to each other. We now know the value of a plus b is equal to 16, c plus d is equal to 32, and b plus c is equal to 20. We substitute these in to get the equation 16 plus 32 is equal to 20 plus a plus d. Subtract 20 from both sides, and we can then solve that a plus d is equal to 28 and a plus d is exactly equal to the area of the blue region. Therefore, the area of the blue region is equal to 28 square centimeters. And that's the answer. Let's now go to the Turkish University entrance exam. For a bit of context, about 3 million students take the basic proficiency test, the TYT, and about 2 million students take the field proficiency test, AYT in different subjects. So the mathematics test is very difficult. It has an average score of about 7.6 out of 40 questions. So even solving one question seems very significant to me. So here's the problem from the 2019 AYT. A point inside a pentagon is connected to the midpoints of the sides of the pentagon and to a corner as shown in the figure. The areas of the six regions are shown in the figure you need to determine the value of A minus B. So this problem can be solved in a very similar fashion. Let's start with the detail of the midpoints of the sides. Let's mark the five midpoints of the five sides. We know each side is bisected at the midpoint. Just like the viral problem, we will now connect the interior point to the corners of the pentagon. So once we do that, we will divide the pentagon into triangles, and there will be 10 triangles that divide up this pentagon. We can now focus on the triangles. So we have the areas of these color-coded regions, and let's start out by analyzing one side. Let's start out with the triangle that has an area of A and the triangle in brown that is next to it. What can we say about these two triangles? Well, they are divided at the midpoint of the side, so we know that this base length is equal to this base length, 
and we can also say that they both have the same height. So these two triangles have equal areas, and both of these areas will be equal to A. Let's now go back to the main diagram and consider the two triangles that are shaded in brown. We know the total area of the brown region is 5, and one of the triangles is A, so the other triangle must be equal to 5 minus A. Let's then go back to the main diagram and consider the two triangles along this bottom side of the pentagon. We know they are divided at the midpoint of the side, so they have equal base lengths and their heights will be equal, so they must have equal areas. So this blue triangle will have an area that's equal to 5 minus A. We then go back to the main diagram and we will continue. So look at this dark blue region. The total area is equal to 7. We know that one triangle is 5 minus A. So the other triangle will be 7 minus the quantity 5 minus A, and this simplifies to be 2 plus A. So that's the area of this triangle. We go back to the main diagram and then consider this green triangle, which is along the same side as this dark blue triangle. These two triangles are divided at the midpoint of the side, so they will have an equal area. So this green triangle will have an area that's equal to 2 plus A. We now go back to the main diagram. We have solved for the areas in the bottom half of this figure in terms of the unknown area A. Let's do the same thing for the top half of this figure in terms of the unknown area B. So let's focus on this side of the pentagon. As before, these two triangles will have equal areas, so the purple triangle will have an area equal to B. We now go back to the main figure and then focus on this purple region. The entire region has an area equal to 4, and this triangle's area is equal to B, so the other triangle's area will be 4 minus B. We then will proceed to the next side of the pentagon, we know that these two triangles will have equal areas, so this green triangle will have an area equal to 4 minus B. We now look at the big picture. We know the area of the green region is equal to 8, but it's also equal to the sum of these areas. So we have the equation 4 minus B plus 2 minus A is equal to 8. This will simplify to be A minus B plus 6 is equal to 8. And finally, that means A minus B is equal to 2. And that's the value we need to determine. A minus B is equal to 2 is the answer. What an amazing question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.